I want to talk about the reputation lag attack. We're talking in the context of online systems where reputation is important. So you can think about an e-marketplace like Amazon or eBay, where users have a, a particular reputation. And if they misbehave, that, that reputation will go down. You can think of online systems like social media, where you know people may not be given explicit values, but they're still trust that people have in each other that can deteriorate or, or improve. You can also think about uh, systems that are more hidden, like uh, on the dark web or cryptocurrency, that sort of thing, um, where often trust and reputation are still important, regardless of which side of the law that you're on. Then what is reputation lag, right? Well, if someone does misbehave, there will be several steps along the way before their reputation starts deteriorating, right? Um, if I promise to sell you something, I can wait a couple of weeks before I deliver. Um, you're not immediately going to put a, a bad review online. If I just send you an email saying, oh, sorry, I don't know what happened. Uh, I'll resend the parcel. I can, I can stretch that for quite a while um, before they're going to say, they never gave me the thing that I paid for. And the same is true in a, in a lot of settings, right? So we have the period where the lag is coming from um, people not updating the system. Then in a centralized system, the moment you post your review, which is negative, the reputation goes down. But if you're talking about, um, say, social media, um, it may take a while also for this to propagate. Um, someone does something bad, whoever the victim was is going to tell their peers about their bad experiences, but it will take a while before it becomes commonly known um, that there's something bad going on. The next question is, okay, I, want, well, I wanted to talk about the reputation lag attack, right? So what's, what's the attack bit? Um, so it's natural for there to be reputation lag, and a good system is designed with that in mind. But attackers are people that want to exploit these differences between reality and, and, and what's in the system. Now, the reputation lag attack is often combined with other attacks in, in uh, trust and reputation systems. So let's, let's talk about a couple of attacks that are sort of quite intuitive. One attack that you can do is called a, a bad mouthing attack, which is a very simple attack. You just leave one star ratings on all of your competition, right? Now, for some online systems, this may be impossible. Like an, a system like Amazon will check if there's been a transaction. You cannot just randomly give a one star review to your competitors. Um, and I think that's an interesting observation to be made about all these attacks, right? To what extent they are possible or not kind of depends on, on the system assumptions. Uh, so the bad mouthing attack is, is probably one of the most well-known ones. Similarly, uh, you can leave fake good ratings as well, right? Um, but there's other attacks out there. Um, there's an attack called the exit scam, right? So the idea is uh, you know you're going to leave the system, and once you leave the system, your reputation is useless. So not, why not capitalize on this? So sometimes people sell their accounts to criminals, so they can use an account with a good reputation for nefarious business. Sometimes people do it themselves. Uh, sometimes there's nothing illegal involved, but still kind of selfish behavior, right? So there's different flavors of it. Um, another example is a whitewashing attack where you just misbehave. And if your rep reputation becomes too bad, you just create a new account and then you start with your new account. Um, so again, to what extent this is possible or not, it depends on how good a system is at checking people that make their accounts. Potentially the police will get involved if it's illegal, in which case obviously creating a new account isn't really going to help you. Another well-known attack is the, is the Sybil attack. The Sybil attack is where users create multiple accounts uh, to sort of support each other, right? So um, you put a product online and you create a hundred accounts um, to give yourself good ratings. So here you're combining two attacks, the Sybil attack, creating multiple accounts, with uh, the ballot stuffing attack, so giving yourself good ratings. Uh, well, giving fake good ratings. So let's go to the attack that we're actually interested in, uh, which is the reputation lag attack. So similar to the others, it's exploiting 
um, some of the things you can do to try to unfairly get a better reputation than you otherwise would. Um, so what's the attack? Well, you know that there's going to be a lag between your actions and the results. Uh, there's two things you can do to exploit that. One, you can try to do actions to make that gap as long as possible. Um, so then we're talking about making up excuses, why you didn't do the things that you promised to do, etc., etc., just so that your reputation won't be tarnished, right? You make promises, you say, yes, I'll fix it, try to extend that period for as long as possible. Uh, but the other uh, sort of, and I think understudied approach, is to try to do as many bad things in a short time as possible, right? Um, exploit that gap by acting maliciously as much as you can in a short time frame. Um, so if we think about an e-marketplace, you could make an advert for a new iPhone for 100 quid, you know, and people are going to be like, oh, that's a good deal. So you're going to get loads and loads of people that want to buy it off of you. Your reputation looks excellent, so they're not going to suspect that it's a scam. Um, and you can exploit as many people as possible, right? Now, what happens after you are eventually discovered? Right? Obviously, your reputation will not be recoverable at that stage. So often the reputation lag attack is combined with attacks like uh, the exit scam. Another attack it combines well with is the value imbalance attack. Not all systems will record the value of a transaction. So what you could do is be a good guy and cooperate and, and, and deliver what you promise whenever the stakes are low, but when the stakes are large, you're a bad guy, right? Um, so that combines nicely with the reputation lag. Oh, so you're well. getting five star reviews for delivering key rings, but then when the iPhones go through, they don't actually make it. That's exactly right. Now, when it comes to propagating uh, trust and reputation, um, rather than a centralized system like an e-marketplace, um, a whole load of additional avenues to exploitation pop up, right? Um, because if you, uh, behave badly towards a node in a network that has a lot of influence on the network, a lot of connections across the whole system, you're going to be discovered far more easily than when you do your attack on some nodes on the edges of the network, because it takes a while for the bad reputation to propagate if the distances are longer. Now, I'm sure people are vaguely aware, if they watch the Computer File channel, of the uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. It turns out that on typical social networks, the, the links are typically not that long. So the variance between influential links um, and not so influential links is actually not that big. So you can exploit it, um, but um, one of my uh, PhD students uh, who, by the time this video is released, may or may not have their Viva, um, did some research on, on measuring those effects. And it turns out that yes, this effect exists, but it's actually a lot more subtle than you would expect, which I think is interesting, right? So you've got this nice idea of, of a sophisticated attacker who can squeeze out just a little bit more value by being smart about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a property of, of sort of organic networks um, that uh, the number of links that you will typically get is, is quite limited. Studying the links between nodes um, is something that both the attacker can do and the person designing the system can do. It is important for us as, as uh, you know, as the wider world to, to try to understand the impact of, the, of network structure on attacks like the reputation lag attack. Um, so if we are looking at a typical uh, computer network, um, you know, uh, TCP IP, um, it's a very hierarchical network, uh, which is shaped mostly by geography. Um, so there, you know, if you're talking about network nodes, trying to maintain a reputation for their routing table, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to get different answers to your question about reputation. Um, then when you're talking about social media, where you've got influencers that have loads of connections and people that are more at the periphery, uh, different interest groups, you know, it, it will be uh, a different structure. Uh, but the interesting thing is, it turns out um, that all those structures, the reputation lag attack is sort of vaguely similar in terms of power, which I thought was surprising. If we think about things like 
uh, influencers promoting uh, cryptocurrency scams, right? Um, the question that we're basically studying is if we have influences with a wider range or with a more niche range, you know, what's the most effective way to push your scam? Not because we want to help them push scams, but because we want to fight against it, right? Um, and uh, obviously, if you've got a very wide, well-connected network, it means that you can spread your lives more effectively, earn more money, uh, but it's also more likely that your reputation will be tarnished quickly because someone will figure out it's a scam, and then it sort of feeds back fairly quickly because you're a central node. Mm. Um, whereas if you're more on the periphery and, and you have a more niche community, you might be able to, to keep the scam going for, for longer because fewer people are involved. And if someone on the other side of the network discovers it, it still takes a while to, for the bad reputation to filter through the entire network. And I suppose that, that brings me nicely because I'm, I'm obviously wary we're using the word scam when I think some people don't realise that perhaps they're promoting something that is a scam, but perhaps they don't realise it at the time. So it can be inadvertent. And the reason I say that I'm putting it in such careful terms is I was thinking of, say, this um, uh, browser plugin, Honey, that has been talked about a bit, you know. Ah, yeah, that's a very interesting because example. I mean, technically, it's not a scam, but it happens to do things that people were not very happy with for, for quite obvious reasons, if you look at the details. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So once the information is out there about what they've done, their reputation is tarnished, right? Uh, without necessarily putting any labels about it, um, it was clear from the get-go that this is not a model that was long-term sustainable, right? Getting people to promote a tool um, that would have as a side effect uh, reducing the income of the promoter of the tool is not something that's going to sustain very long. We presume the goal of the owners of Honey is to make as much money as possible. They will probably in some terms have thought about reputation lag. Whatever they called it, they may not have explicitly labeled it so, in fact, I doubt they did, uh, but they would have thought about how can we extract as much value from this as possible. Um, now their reputation is tarnished, very few people are going to be using Honey. Um, so that's basically the exit, right? Um, so we can see that this, this pattern pops up all over the place. The question I think is that um, if it's going to manage that and uh, that is where the problem stands because companies that have invested resources and the time to train software engineers in C or C++ will be...